Hi, I'm Todd Nathanson. And I'm Lena Morgan. This is a Song vs. Song bonus episode. As every year, we have just sat through the Grammys, and then we sat our butts in front of the computer so that we could record this podcast. So we are recording this within the, uh, the, the show just ended 10 minutes ago. I think there is going to be fallout from this, but we don't know it yet. This was a uh, a very Grammys Grammys, at least for the last two and a half hours. <laughs> oh, that actually made me cough. Uh, uh, Todd, it's been 84 years. <laughs> uh, hashtag scammies is trending right now, but it always does after uh, the Grammys because everyone's always upset about who won and who didn't win. Uh, also trending on Twitter is Grannies, which that may be a typo. Or it may be a funny joke about who votes for the Grammys. I'm not sure. I just thought they were talking about me. Oh, boy. Like, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm a little stunned uh, with how that ended. You said it was, it, was a, it was a very Grammys. Grammys. What did you mean by that, Todd? <laughs> well, when I was a kid, you could count on this happening like every year where they will nominate a, you know a few relevant artists and one album or so where the only constituency it had was the Grammys not the general public not the critics the only people who liked it were people who vote on Grammys this is how uh Steely Dan won in the year 2000 Herbie Hancock won it was like a Ray Charles tribute album won one year this thing used to happen a lot it hasn't happened i think in quite a while but tonight uh the big winner of the final award of the night went to um john batiste you listened to the album you I did. tell me who john batiste is well uh, the john batiste for most people is the band leader for the late show with stephen colbert I'm sure he, he's a fun guy and he's a good artist. And you told me the album's good. I li- I liked the the one song I heard from it. I mean, he's a virtuoso, you know. He's he's yeah. an incredible performer, and that album is solid. But it's very, it's a throwback record in a lot of ways. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's like a jazz record, a jazz pop record, something like that. It's it's pretty poppy. I mean, I don't know. I don't know that like I I, I don't know. I would describe it as full jazz though. No, um, jazz R and B. Yeah, uh, but it's it's. It's a good record. It's the kind of record if you put it on, you're going to feel good when you listen to it. I don't know. The thing about John is the reason why I was surprised that he, he won the way that he did is not because it's so impossible for the Grammys to do such a thing, but I'm still accustomed to when things like that happen that usually happens for people who something in their ego requires it. The thing about John Batiste is that he, I don't know if he really possesses an ego. That's a guy that just the music kind of, he's a vessel, right? And it just, it kind of flows through him. I don't think that he cares if he wins anything or not. I think he just wants to be able to create. And I realize that that's, you know, that's a, those are, those are lofty words. Maybe that sounds like bullshit, but he, but he's always just seemed like a very genuine Nice guy that's very good at what he does, that he makes people around him feel welcome. So I don't like I didn't see him win and go, God, I'm so angry about it. But it was unusual because the assumption going in was that Olivia Rodrigo and Sauer were going to rule the night. There were a lot of uh, nominees this year. And this is something that was already suggested to me. And I, I think I agree is that there was some vote splitting going on like the Olivia block got uh, their power was reduced by the Billy block and the Taylor block. And they just kind of siphoned votes off of each other. It could be. Um, I, I, I am. I don't know. Like this seemed like, I, I know I've talked about how the Grammys are a bunch of fogies who always vote for shit. No one likes or cares about except them. But it seemed like with the way Billy Eilish cleaned up in the last two Grammys is it seemed like that's the direction they were heading where they were like, we're going to give it to the people who make us a whole lot of money for the music industry. Yeah, I mean, here's here's another thing. Um, this was a big deal year for the Grammys because it was the first year where the there was no nomination review committee for the major awards. Mm-hmm. 
um, which was supposed to, in theory, sort of prevent some of the chances that these, you know, these things, these people that get accused of being like a, like Academy plants winning, mm-hmm. you know, it was supposed to prevent that, which is weird because it almost feels like it happened more this year than it did in the previous two. I mean, her is still there. She's still all over the Grammys like she always is. And I don't really like the word plant, but if I were going to use it on anyone, her would be my number one pick. I mean, but her also has like actual listeners. So that's, I'm not truly comfortable saying that, but it it seems like the Grammys like her more than anyone, any other demographic. And that's especially true of that John Batiste record, which I don't think I would have heard of if not for the Grammys. Yeah. I mean, I'm not mad that people are aware of it. The, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't find myself going, there's an album that there's no reason to listen to. That's a good album. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know. It just feels it wrong when like, it seems like the main audience for this award winning album is the people who vote for the awards and no one else. That's why that when we criticize Oscar bait, that's what we're talking about. The critics don't like it. The public doesn't like it just, but the people who vote for the, in the Academy like it. Yeah. I just don't want people to, to take it out on John Baptiste. That's all. That's fair. I mean, like you, you said he didn't, he doesn't seem like an ego driven guy. He certainly had a very stunned reaction and a very humble speech. So I, you know, that, that seems right to me, but it seems like this couldn't have won without a, a lot of networking. Uh, I mean, I don't know how these things work. I mean, Billie Eilish certainly also seemed uh, very stunned the, the last two years. I mean, she has people. I'm sure John Bat- Batiste has people too. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't know that we should be. T- I mean, that's this is this is stuff that's sort of above our pay grade. We don't really know anything about this shit. Yeah. Do you want to talk about, uh, um, I don't know, performances, stuff that surprised us um, as far as as far as people winning or performances being good or bad? Let me ask you, um, what was your impression of like the night as a whole? Would you say this was like a well-produced three and a half hours of television? Uh, I honestly would say that on average, I was kind of bored. Um, An hour in, I thought this was uh, a really good show. Yeah, I would say it was not until about an hour and a half. There's there is a specific event in which things began to take a turn. Was there? Uh, you you tell me, and I'll I'll tell you if I agree. Uh, well, for me, the the turn involved the Ukraine, and I feel as though perhaps oh, we should we should save that for a little bit. I see. For further in, because I'm yeah, not let's sure. Hold on you to and, that one. You and I have not actually. We should have had a pre-show prep. <laughs> for how we were going to discuss this, and we didn't. If there's like an eight-minute gap in this podcast, you'll know what happened and what we had to cut. But yeah, all right. So yes, I agree. I think, and you you tweeted about this, I believe, that mm-hmm. um, they front loaded a lot of really big artists' performance. Not just big artists, but like big performances from those artists, like the the most elaborate. Uh, the most stagey, the most uh, just the most award showy, the most showy of the uh, of the night and the most relevant artists of the night. They are they all took the first hour, which really surprised me. And I was like, wow, this is if they keep this up through the whole night, this show is going to be great. And, and they did not. And, and then no. So just when uh, you think it can't get any better, it doesn't. Yes. So the show opened with the one group that did technically sweep. And that is Silk Sonic. Yes. And well, they won every award they were up there for, which is, I think they're the big that winners. Is what of the is, night. That is what a sweep is. Yeah, they won everything they were up for. Well, I mean, it, usually when you say they swept, it means they also won best album of the year and they weren't up for that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to them. They just, yeah. you know what it is. They're just a pair of goofy goofballs. Mm hmm. They're, they're, they're goofy goobers. Yeah. Um, is how I believe SpongeBob would see them. <laughs> but, you know, uh, so they, they came out and they were dressed as a pair of like 70s era Elvis Presley Vegas guys. Mm-hmm. And they did uh, 777, which is not the song that I thought they would do. And then I thought about where they were. And then I was like, I can't believe I didn't think that was the song they were going to do. You know, it's a, it's a funny thing. A couple of weeks ago, I went to Vegas to go see Katy Perry. You sure did. <laughs> I earned it and I deserve it. But <laughs> yes, 
And while I was there, uh, the Academy of Country Music Awards were also happening mm-hmm. right in the in Vegas. I was like, I, I, like I could have bought tickets for it. I was like, really surprised with that. I was like, that's weird. I wonder what, why, uh, you know, don't they usually have these things in Nashville? I assumed. And now the Grammys were also in Vegas. And I'm starting to think, like, is it because they're lax about the COVID restrictions in Nevada? I'm not sure, but I'll tell you what. There was a um, there was a bit of a behind the scenes brouhaha, or at least a rumored one about this. I don't know if you were aware. I uh, I ended up thinking about it again because there was a joke um, that Trevor Noah told about um, being in Las Vegas, and he said it's like if crypto was a city. I missed and, it. And here's yeah. what's funny about that. Um, so they were at the the MGM, right? That's that's that that was the arena they were at. Do you know that it was originally it was supposed to be in L.A. and then um, they moved they moved it? Do you know what the name of the arena is in L.A. that it would have been hosted at? At the Crypto.com Arena. That's As mother. It? That's motherfucking correct. I just I was like I don't. And what I know about this about the rumor is that a lot of artists, a lot of people were really mad about the show being moved to Vegas because it's thought of being a dirty city Hmm. and they didn't want to have to lug all of their gear. There was still some restriction as to how large your entourage could be. And, you know, like did people really want to have to lug around heavy gowns and all the hair and makeup stuff? And, you know, there was all this sort of supposed, I don't know how true it is, stress around that. And I just thought it was funny that they said that Vegas was, if crypto was a city, but they, in LA, the arena is the crypto.com <laughs> the arena. The former Staples Center, now the crypto.com arena. But, you, but you know, uh, just, I mean, as, as a, as a, um, as a behind the scenes nerd, especially as pertains to costume related stuff, I thought it was interesting because I don't actually know how it works in Vegas as opposed to, um, Los Angeles or New York or even a place like Atlanta or up in Toronto where everything is filmed, right? Like there are all of these built in mechanisms for how everything works. Now, I don't know how much that matters to musicians when it comes to an award ceremony, but I do know that, that, that there's a lot of costumes involved. So I was kind of curious as to, do they just not know the same number of people out there? Is the is there a, yeah. a is there a cost differential I'm unaware of? I just thought yeah. it was kind of an interesting thing to hear that people were annoyed about. Fun I, little uh, behind the behind the scenes stuff, which then was uh, in front of the scenes for the show, because one of the things that they decided to do with the Grammys this year was they wanted to take some of your behind the scenes people and put them on say on stage to introduce. The artists, and in fact, one of the the costume people did in fact come out and introduce one of the artists. Yeah, they had the tour manager introduce people, and they had uh, uh, the wardrobe people come out and to introduce the artists they work for, which was like a nice gesture. Made me kind of wonder if like people kind of begged off. And it was it was weird. I mean, yeah, it, it, that's one of those. It's nice in theory. <laughs> yeah, it was it was fine. It just wasn't very. Interesting. I mean, I'll t- I'll take a million behind the scenes people who are not entirely camera ready over mm-hmm. over one Jared Leto every any day, <laughs> um, and I would take it uh, over any person making a joke about the Oscars any day for the rest of my life. It, they mercifully kept it very brief. Yes, they, uh, like if they if no one had said anything, I think that would be like extremely awkward because it was like hanging over everyone's head. So they just made a Trevor Monroe made a quick reference to it. And then we moved the fuck on. And I, I thought that was the correct way to handle it. Yes. It was as benign as it was ever going to be so benign that we're going to do the right thing and not talk about it anymore. Moving on. Yes. Okay. Um, what were the standout performances for you? I always feel like this is some of the the big stuff. What what did you think was really great? Uh, best performance of the night, um, BTS by a lot. And if you are smart, you will agree. 
I <laughs> I'm, am not, a, I'm not joking, I am a though. fool, so I won't. Um, <laughs> That was my it, it was mine. It was my favorite performance that I really liked the way they did that. I thought it was a really good dance performance. Uh no, yeah. I'm kind of want to go. I wish I had I had circled. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought that uh Mulanaz X was excellent. He's up there for me. Oh wait, okay. When I say BTS by a lot, actually there were a few performances who were close for me. Lil Nas X was one of them. I really liked the way he put on uh the medley that he did. It was, and you know, I've already seen him perform with Jack Harlow at an award show, so I didn't think uh, it was going to live up, but I, I thought it did. I, I really liked what Little Nas X did up there. Yeah, and again, I think, these are both first hour performances. Yes, I would say that of the 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 latter half, the only one that really stuck out to me was um, Lady Gaga. Thought she was great. I I didn't notice anything about it. No. I, she came to, She came out and did love for sale. She did a little weird little dance. And man, I don't know. I'm not into her old school standards performances that she does. I think that she, she brings a certain, um, it's the emotional performance. And I don't say that to mean that the emotions that she was feeling when she was doing a, a tribute to Tony Bennett were somehow false, but that she knew how to sort of summon everything that she's ever felt about him and the work they've gotten to do together and provide a tribute and a degree of care, which is a thing that she has sort of become known for. Um, and, and especially recently because of how she treated Liza Minnelli at the Oscars. And then uh, tonight, in fact, because when uh, SZA and Doja Cat won for best duo, SZA is injured <laughs> <laughs> and was trying to get up the steps and had this huge train on her gown. And if you watched, Lady Gaga grabbed the train and helped her get up the steps, which is a very, I mean, I just feel like that's that's yeah. sort of Lady Gaga all over. And um, I don't think you can, I mean, and there's a lot of genuine people in the industry. There's a lot of genuine human beings. I don't think it's easy to take all that genuine emotion and sell it in a way that is a great performance and still genuine. And so that's why it really stuck out to me as being one of the better ones of the night. And uh, the other one I would highlight is Billy. Yeah. I've that's the tricky thing, right? Is that I almost was resistant to say Lil Nas X, but that's because he's always outstanding. And it's the reason why mm -hmm. I didn't immediately jump on Billy is because she also is always outstanding. Although... <laughs> What I will say about the, she really loves using that, um, the rain coming down, doesn't she? <laughs> she does. I feel like we've seen her do that before. She does it a lot. Uh, she does it in music videos. There's like an Adobe suite advertisement that's I always see that has her being rained down on. Oh, that's right. The Adobe ad. And, uh, yeah. and now, and now this, and, um, what I, what I said to you while we were watching the show was I, I feel like one of these days her doing that over and over again is going to bite her in the ass. Like mm -hmm. someday there's going to be whatever is the future equivalent of the VH1 behind the music <laughs> where like she's riding a high and like she's performing at some show where the rain's coming down. They're like, they're like, it was a high point for Billie Eilish. But the storm clouds were gathering. Coming up next on VH1's Behind the Music. I hope she doesn't have a turbulent career. I, I, really... I hope so, too. But I keep like, I'm like, oh, God, the other shoe's going to drop. Her and her brother get along too well. Something bad's going to happen. Oh, God. Um, thank goodness, by the way, Phineas didn't win for Best New Artist. What a relief. Can you imagine someone who already has, what, eight? fucking grammys <laughs> getting best new artist good grief um uh do you want to talk to talk about uh bts a couple of people will love that i just thought it was very charming the james bond thing they did and were like very very mission of, impossible almost yeah yeah the dancing through the lasers and stuff like i you know it's funny like i was really shocked that they were playing that early and um, often they're saved for the very end to keep people there what I heard from the the couple of the BTS fans who showed up in my mentions is that they were getting kind of sick of that, quite honestly. They were sick of having to sit through three hours of crap they don't care about so that they can watch BTS. I think the you know they did it a favor by getting them out of the way early. 
I just thought it was very strange that all the youngs played uh, in that first hour, like they had a bedtime or something. Like Olivia went came really early, which I was really surprised for. Yeah, I mean, she was she was she was right after she was the second performance of the night. Right after that, BTS, Lil Nas X and Billy. It felt like they unloaded the clip really early. I should talk about BTS more so people don't get angry. I didn't talk about BTS enough. I mean, listen, so when you Uh, said that that um, Scammies was trending, mm -hmm. we all know it's because BTS didn't win anything. That's the reason. Well, they were you know, only I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean it probably, it probably, like you said, it probably trends every year. But this year, the reason it was trending is because they didn't win. And I do often find myself wondering, and this year, perhaps more so than ever, which is why <laughs> I don't. I genuinely look at them and think the Grammys have nothing but to gain. By giving them something, even if they don't think they deserve it, which, by the way, there's no reason to say that they don't deserve it over yeah. literally. There's, there's nobody else that I looked at at the show and said, gosh, they're more deserving than BTS. Like, I don't have strong feelings about them, but I don't there's nothing about them that goes, man, they especially don't deserve it. And uh, it, they, it, they it is bizarre. It is bizarre for them to not win because it really the, the Grammys have nothing but to win by giving them yeah. something. Well, I mean, they can't rig the vote. And the Grammy voters are old and they probably have no interest in K-pop and BTS needs to release a new album while they're, you know, the hot shit. If once they do that and the Grammys see how much money they put into this industry, I think they will, uh, they will have a better shot at winning a Grammy. They lost to, they were only nominated for one thing. They lost to Doja Cat, that Doja Cat song, that BTS song are songs I both like uh, about as much. Like, I didn't feel bad for BTS that they lost that. I didn't think they were, like, ripped off or anything. I was like, well, yeah. that's fine. I, don't, I never feel bad for BTS. Yeah. Um. I mean, I feel bad for their fans. Um. BTS is going to be fine, you know? Yeah. BTS is the biggest fandom on the face of the earth. Like, they don't, they, I mean, I mean, this is the thing you see on Twitter all the time, which is an accurate statement, which is the Grammys need BTS much more so than the other way around. I'm sure that, that BTS would wouldn't mind having a Grammy, <laughs> but you know, they don't, they sure don't need it. And I will say, you know, who did need it is Doja Cat. <laughs> Doja Cat has, has wants a Grammy, has been wanting a Grammy for a really long time. And, you know, we, every year, I think for the last three years, we have circled around the idea of, is it Doja Cat's year? Yay or nay. And, um, I, I, I guess maybe this is it. I think we've arrived. Uh, I was happy for her. Um, you know, I I think it was very funny that she <laughs> was on the toilet when she won. That and is had the, to uh, rush out. That was the moment of the night for me. That's I I am not like the biggest Doja Cat like fan of her music. Like it, she tops out at like a seven or eight for me. And I'm I'm still waiting for her to really knock me out with a, with that ten out of ten song. But Doja Cat, the person I like a lot, and she's she's very easy to like, and I was very happy for her. And she got up there and just straight up admitted, I was like, I I ran out of the bathroom as quickly as I could. I and believe very, the quote was, "I have oh, never taken such a fast piss." Piss. It was a wonderful moment. It is the moment of the night by far. That wasn't that wasn't BTS performing. Yeah, I mean, I thought I think that Planet Her is a great record, though. That's I mean. That's really solid. There's a lot of really good tunes on it. Boy, I'm like such an old person. It's a good album. Um, <laughs> I've read, there's a bunch of humdingers on there, but it's good. I it's bought really her LP. <laughs> I would buy that on. I would I buy that it on, on my on, hi-fi. I would buy. Would buy that on a vinyl record player. I'll put no. it on my gramophone. That's what no, the Grammys very, are named after, you know. Mm. It's, it's very funny because uh, they were following SZA as she limped to the uh, the stage on her crutches to get the award she shared with Doja Cat. And I was like, why are we following her? Where's Doja? I was like looking for her in the background. And then she like sprints down the aisle. I was like, did was SZA on crutches just to give Doja time to get to the podium? I was like, that's like, a pretty serious troll. That's that's a real long game. That's a real yeah. just had them on you- hand for as a prop in case this happened. No, that's not what happened. 
but uh, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, is there anything else you would like to talk about? No, be- it was be- before we try to delicately speak about the Ukraine. Boy, because there's, I mean, there's like there's a couple things that it, that that happened in here. Um, I think then, that then, uh, after the did, first hour, I was really struggling. I was really, really struggling to get through it. Why? Why? I don't. So does Olivia Rodrigo always sing suburbs as suburbs? Sh- sh- is that a thing that she does all the time? <laughs> I didn't notice. It was I, it was it was very pronounced of this performance um, to the point that I tweeted something to the tunes of that I felt like I was her mother going, "Sweetie, you gotta take out your retainer." I was surprised they didn't they used up the Olivia in their cartridge so quickly, but I guess the idea is that you know Olivia is not exactly a seasoned performer yet. She hasn't been on tour yet. She hasn't. Uh, she's just made her first album. She hasn't had a chance to go out with it yet. So like give her uh, an early shot because she's still a little green. I thought was the idea maybe. And she did, she was fine. I liked, uh, I like driver's license. Uh, it wasn't really a knockout performance or anything. I don't think anyone's going to be talking about it for, uh, you know, tomorrow. No, I mean, it's just not the, it's not the, you know, I, I understand that it's the song that was up for a lot of awards, but I don't know. It's just not like the song you would expect at a, at a Grammy performance. You'd think no, like that's one, exactly. of her, one of her bigger songs. You you mean bigger as in louder, not bigger as yeah. in popular. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like it's her biggest song and it's I know, slow. I know. It is Grammys. very grammar. Grammys likes a, likes a slow ballad. They like a ballad. Yeah. Ballad. Like, so there was basically no chance that she wasn't going to do driver's license. I feel like, like she did good for you at the MTV awards. That's the song for the MTV awards. Uh, this was the performance she was going to do this time around. And it's just, know, it's, it's just not as, it's just not as fun. It's just destined to not be as exciting a performance. That's all. Yeah. Like I, I remember, you know, in previous years they'd have Ariana on or Camilla on and they would have, make them do ballads that weren't even like popular ballads. It was like a deep cut from their albums. And I was like, man, play the hits. So this was a hit. So it was what it was. And then after that first hour, I was just bored to tears. Uh, like I love Chris Stapleton, but I didn't love that performance. Carrie Underwood was fine. Uh, yeah, that was, it, that was deeply underwhelming. Um, yeah. I, it's so funny, you know, I, I, I felt like I ought to be excited when, um, when Dua Lipa and, and, and Megan Thee Stallion came out, you know, how I like them. I mean, I, I will say this, I, I, it was a cute little bit that they came out wearing the same outfit and then complained to Donatella Versace mm-hmm. And then Donatella Versace came up on stage and, you know, quote, fixed the dresses so that they would mm-hmm. be different. I mean, obviously, they yeah. were they were, they were tearaway dresses. But, you know, that's some real Broadway bullshit. And I was there for <laughs> it. Um, I love that. That was very cute. I'm trying to remember if there, if there was anything else that was sort of like glitzy showbiz bullshit that made me happy. Uh, because oh. there were occasional moments of that. I remember during the BTS thing that one of those fellows, and I apologize that I don't, I don't know all of them. Again, I am in my 40s and clueless and out of touch in all ways. But one of them was whispering in the ear of Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> and I was like, is she having the time of her life? Like, is she, is she part of the BTS army and doesn't know what to do? It was cute. I like that. So there was stuff like that, right? I wish the show had been a lot of that. You know, like you said, the, the first hour was a lot of that and then it was it was it was ukraine time and that is the turning point no doubt in my mind that things take a turn right there john legend is brought out president Zelensky gives a gives a, a message you know that's that's very funny because there were a few people in the in the hollywood world who wanted him for the oscars sean penn most notably and Zelensky was not did not do a performance there, did not give a speech there, which I thought was like, yeah, obviously he's leading a country in the middle of a horrible war. Why would he do an awards show, you idiot, Sean Penn? Why would he do that? And then he did that. I really did not see that coming. I, I, I'm still kind of processing my, my feelings about that because, you know, there are horrible things happening in the world that, you know, people should be aware of. 
And uh, I think just today we were finding out like it's actually so much worse than we realized. I did not think this sequence worked as just something that should be on television. Anything else happened that night? I John Batiste, he performed. He did. Um, and it was a very was a- exciting, dynamic, interesting performance. I don't know that it really quite engaged me perfectly, but, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, it's just another reminder of what a great performer he is. He's definitely the kind of guy that I would see live. Um, oh, and uh, what I got curious, what did you think of Justin Bieber's performance? Well, you know, the, there's an unfortunate impact, which is that his song, more so than most, got, you know, muted. Leaped a lot, yeah. Which I don't know how, how that happened. But it takes a it takes a lot out of the song because it's so consistent, you know. Yeah, well, like were they not prepared for this, or did they just? Yeah, I mean, Billy just basically didn't say the words in her song, right? Just which like also a... which also detracts a little bit, but not as much as them having to just mute the whole song every like fifteen to twenty seconds. Yeah, un- unfortunately, there there wasn't really a way to radio edit Billy's song, so she just like held the mic Didn't, away from her. And uh, I think Lil Nas X did that also. Yeah. I mean, they just, they sort of were able to roll with it. And Justin Bieber, yeah. I don't like, I don't know what the, what the rationale, what the decision was, but it, you know, I, it's very hard to judge the quality of the actual performance without being in the room because the way we watched it, we only got a certain percentage of it. Well, I, I was more asking about the part before the song kicked in where he was just like sat at the piano and, poured his heart out in a ballad version of Peaches. Oh, well, here's what I have to say about that, Todd. I found it very amusing that they had him sit in front of a piano immediately after John Baptiste <laughs> sat in front of a piano. He was sitting there. He's pouring his guts out, singing so- words like, badass bitch, took my chick up to the north, yeah. And I am going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I thought it was funny intentionally. I thought it was like, like if Bruno Mars was doing this for like Uptown Funk, we'd all be like, Haha, I see what you're doing, Bruno Mars. And I'm going to give Beaver the benefit of the doubt too, because it was pretty ridiculous. I liked, I liked that a lot more than I liked the actual performance, because I don't like that song and he did it pretty straight. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you've asked me about an artist that I have literally never liked in my whole life <laughs> i've you liked know. a couple of things by him even though i'm pretty firmly anti-bieber for the most part so you might, there's who did we miss well there was oh, there a was... performance from her uh that involved jimmy jam travis barker and uh lenny kravitz who is an okay. immortal <laughs> you know that's funny um I, you know that is i think that performance explains why the grammys like her so much she's obviously very talented she can play everything I just wish the songs were better. And she did play my favorite song of hers, Damage. I like that song a lot. And they it was ba- it's based around a Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis sample. And then Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis came out to, uh, to perform the song with her. And then randomly Lenny Kravitz and Travis Barker came out to perform with her. And before the, before it happened, I was thinking, it's like, man, you know what the Grammys have missed these last couple of years, a total clusterfuck of a performance where it's like Metallica Springsteen and Marin Morris do a tribute to chubby checker or whoever. And that was like a little, just randomly a whole bunch of people together that, that felt nostalgic of the way the grammars had been for most of my life. And in a way they weren't tonight for the most part, I I heard they have a new director. They were trying to scale things back. They scaled, uh, last year's show back a lot and it was much better than almost any Grammys in my lifetime. And this started out like that. And then it kind of devolved into the old school Grammys. What what did you think about the Nas performance? You know, it's weird because he came out doing his old hits, but not like the Illmatic hits, the hits from the early two thousands. He did, I can and made you look. And uh, what was the other one? One Mike, which I love those songs. I love all those songs. It's just if, if Nas were to div, do a greatest hits performance, those weren't what I would expect him to do. And then he did something off the new album. I, it's weird to see hip hop reach its Vegas years. Yeah. Well, you know what I thought is that um, it was fine. I guess just in the back of my head, I remembered, you know, that time where there was an MTV uh, award 
that we watched and they had huh. Busta come out. And he did all his old hits? Yeah. And, and how dynamic and electric and how that was bit, like the best thing of the whole night. Mm-hmm. And how there was just nothing about the Nas thing that made me go, gosh, I'll never forget this for the rest of my life. Whereas, again, I immediately thought about Busta's performance when I saw Nas coming out and doing his old hits, you know? Yeah, well, Busta in his old older years has remained a, a really fun guy, and Nas is increasingly a cranky, preachy old man. Yeah, I'll uh, say this. Um, one thing about Justin Bieber, BTS really liked that performance. <laughs> they were deeply vibing to it, so maybe there's something that we... Uh, that we, we missed out on. And speaking of BTS, um, at one point, um, uh, Trevor Noah was with them and asked if it was true that they had learned to speak English from watching Friends. And that is true. And he asked, who was like, oh, like, which are, why are you like, a, you're like a Ross or a Joey? And um, one of the guys says, no, I'm a, I'm a Chandler. He makes me very sad. <laughs> I was like, same, same BTS, same. That was that was my moment of the night. BTS saying that they love friends because Chandler makes them sad. <laughs> That's dark, man. That's some dark shit. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know why, but that really made me laugh. It was really, really bizarre. Um, but very accurate. I was like, oh, I understand these guys. Relatable. Same, bro. Same. You know, there was one odd thing where uh, Joni Mitchell came out to present an award or introduce someone. Ah, uh, yes. And it wasn't a uh, particularly notable uh, thing, except that Joni Mitchell does not do that shit. No, she doesn't. Um, she came out and, and I mean, I think she believed and, and meant every word that she said, but it was still up on the prompter. Yeah. And so she was having trouble seeing it as happens when you get older. And she's dealt with a lot of health issues in the last, I think, five or six years, especially. Um, it was Brandy Carlisle, by the way, who she yeah, introduced. That's right. uh, yeah, boy, you, Brandy Carlisle sure was there. Listen, it was a good performance. It's just, just not as, it's not the best performance she's ever given at the Grammys. That's the bottom yeah, line. I true. love Brandy Carlisle. And, 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 and once again, you know, I mean, I think. Um, she puts out great albums. The album that, that was sort of up for stuff this year was, uh, I wouldn't call it the best album that she's ever put out in the world. It's, it's, it's good. Um, in these silent days, it's a, it's a good, it's a good album, but, um, right on time, I would not, even though it's, I guess like the, the, the big song off that record, it's not the one that stands out to me. I said this on Twitter, but just in case people don't follow me on the tweets, um, if you're looking for a song on that album that is, in fact, really good, it's called Broken Horses, um, would highly, highly recommend that you check that out. That's a standout song for sure. Uh, oh, I know what the um, the other big thing is that we were going to talk about. It was Best New Artist. That was a thing that I felt like was worthy of discussion. Because of all of the categories, that had the most interesting people on the list, I thought. And uh, including someone who, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that Olivia Rodrigo was on there, would have had a real shot. Uh, obviously, Olivia was going to win Best New Artist. You know, if she oh, yeah, was going to win was nothing hers. on the night, that was the one thing that was a guarantee that she would absolutely win. Which is a bummer, because it was such a good category. Um because Baby Kim is in there, um, Arlo Parks is in there, uh, and Japanese Breakfast is in there. And Japanese Breakfast is, you know, like a lot of people, um, new artist is not... <laughs> Quotation marks. Not right. really an accurate uh, statement. Um, however, it is worth noting that Jubilee is arguably one of the best records of 2021. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a really that's one of those records that, you know, she'd 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 been dealing with a lot of stuff on previous records. Right. And she's been she's been recording for almost a decade at this point. But this album was, I think, pretty positive. It was sort of aspirational. It was like it's like re- reaching towards the goal of feeling like a fucking human being. 
And I thought, that's achievable. That's a goal. So I listen to it when I want to feel like, yes, perhaps someday I will feel like a person. Yeah. And it, well, it evokes a certain kind of music that I listened to a lot in the in the mid 2000s. It's a it's a it's a good record. The thing that really bummed me out was that, um, you know, I had accepted she wasn't going to win Best New Artist, but she was also up for Best Alternative Album. Mm hmm. And that went to St. Vincent. And I, listen, I like St. Vincent a lot. I don't think she deserved it this year. It really bummed me out. I thought for sure that was going to be a I guarantee. I, th I thought Jubilee had that, like, in the pocket. I thought that was for sure was going to win. For an artist like Japanese Breakfast to even come within sniffing distance of a Grammy is pretty impressive. I mean, the P Pitchfork really loved that album. And Pitchfork is obviously correct. Like, for a Pitchfork artist to be at the Grammys. I, I thought that was pretty impressive. No, I didn't see that coming. I was like, wow, Grammys, you're really plugged in. <laughs> but, you know, relatively for the Grammys, I mean. Very hot and cold, those Grammys this year. That's yeah. really what it was, right? It was a very hot and cold year. And, when, and when Arlo it, Parks, for that matter, too. I was like, wow, Grammys. Yeah, that was a, that was a huge shocker to me. Um, did you also do what I did where you watched the, the, the sort of like the first... <laughs> couple hours where they gave out to all the the smaller categories where it was uh, LeVar, I, I where little, LeVar Burton was the host I watched a little of it yeah it was, it was very sad because uh that's where a lot of the rock albums got theirs and almost all of them went to the Foo Fighters they did and they and they mentioned uh Taylor and and point of fact I think it's probably worth mentioning that of course one of the least surprising things of all would be that Billie Eilish would wear right they performed together at the the last MTV Awards Billie Eilish and the Foo Fighters. Yeah, and so she wore a a, a, a t-shirt with Taylor's face on it, and that was, I think, was very. Yeah, they gave him a a big send off at the at right before the in memoriam thing. Yeah, he they, got his own a, thing, only, and then the rest of it was all Sondheim all the time. Yeah, uh, I wish I were more of a show tunes person. I could tell you how well that tribute to Stephen Sondheim was. Uh, Rachel Zegler and Leslie Odom and uh, well Cynthia Rebo. Ben Platt. Ben Platt was the That's fourth. right. Sure well, was I'm Ben Platt. A, see, I, you, I know you did a good job. Things. You could you could, you could be on that that podcast musical explaining. I identified all of them on my own. Go me. I, see, I know theater stuff now. So it was a you know a very pretty performance. Uh, it's not songs I had heard at previous in memoriams. So like I, it seems like they usually play the same two songs over and over again. So I thought that was a it was nice. It was nice. Yep. I, um, yeah. So I watched the whole um, of the of the beginning, the part that did not air on terrestrial television, but was on YouTube. And I'll tell you, LeVar Burton was the host. He was lovely, very good. Also made some terrible Will Smith jokes that I hated. Um, but other than that, <laughs> nice. I found out that there was an unofficial Bridgerton musical, which I didn't know about. And I thought, <laughs> and it won an award. And I thought, well, that's swell. What, what, like the the Ratatouille TikTok musical? Is that I don't know. I just it know it's a, I just, it was it was a Bridgerton music. No, I think it, it must it must be like an off Broadway or something. I would assume. I assume it's the real deal, McNeil. You know, like 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 there's a uh, yeah, there's a you know there's a Harry Potter musical like that kind of thing. You know, yeah. or like there's a lot of those. You know, there's like a like an unofficial time travel musical, which is you know Back to the Future the musical, but unofficially that kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, here's another thing I'll tell you. You know who was who? There was a big opening performance for that. I missed that. Um, bunch of people there doing um, Sly and the Family Stones dance to the music. One of the people there, John Popper. John Popper, Todd. I was not aware that John Popper was allowed. <laughs> My understanding was that John Popper is essentially known for three things: playing the harmonica. Th that that like hat vest kind of thing that he does. The vest combo, yeah. Yeah, and uh, tormenting a stranger on the internet. Those are like the three things I know about <laughs> John Popper. And that th third thing has always really stood out for me, I have to say, because he like was like sending like drones to like find the guy's house and sh like a like real lunatic stuff. Um, I think most people and, don't know about that. Oh, I don't like the like, people who know will never forget it, but. Like I'll now. I, I feel bad. Uh, I'm sure he's a I, he's a full human being, but gosh, that's a that's a tough that's a tough taste to get out of your mouth. So when I saw um, him, I was like, oh, all right, well, oh, and of course, the real the real moment of the night where I thought, 
boy, it's a good thing they didn't have this on regular television, but it still ended up trending on Twitter anyway because, of course, it did. Yeah, uh, they gave they they gave the best comedy album to, to Louis C.K. We're going to hear be hearing about that for quite a while. I am absolutely sure. Um, and because, I have no comment. Like, I mean, that's there's, just a thing that happened, and. I do not want to talk, fucking talk about that shit. Sounds great. I I talked for ten <laughs> minutes about Ukraine. We can skip that for sure. Um, yeah, we already uh, assuming that we keep that in, which is yeah, a big. Well, I was like, you will have ample opportunity to talk about Louis C.K.'s Grammy win in the upcoming months, everyone, because that shit is not going to be forgotten anytime soon. Yeah, I'm sure that that will. I'll certainly say this. I think that it's more likely that people will keep that in in their minds than John Legend. Yeah. Um, uh, for better or worse. And by that, I mean for worse, for sure. Uh, for what, for what yeah. it's worth, going back pretty quickly, John Popper is like the Eddie Van Halen of the harmonica. Like people who, like musicians, like really respect him. So that's a fair point. That's probably why he's being invited to things still. Plus, he's like a blues guy, I guess. The, like, the neglected categories. The, the Grammys like to give them a sop every now and then. Like, like during this uh, year, like they had like the gospel slash bluegrass slash barbershop quartet slash spoken word categories, like leading us into ad breaks and stuff like that, which, uh, you know, it's nice to acknowledge that all these things exist, I guess, but it didn't make for a great television. I don't feel like I agree. Uh, I think it is worth mentioning in the plus category that best R&B album went to Jasmine Sullivan for uh, Hotels. That's another, yeah. of, of, of on my list of best records of 2021, that's another one that goes in there. Yeah, well, everyone loves that album. That's a good album. Certainly extremely pop, pop critically acclaimed album. I like Jasmine Sullivan. I'm glad she won. I, I really expected her to get that one because, again, the Grammys love her. By when I say I expected her to win that album, I mean H E R. Yes, I also yes I was I, for a second I was confused. I was like they they yeah. they, they don't love Jasmine. So what are you talking yeah. about? Um, but you know, yes, it was very nice to see Jasmine Sullivan win. I yes, I feel like that album was sort of the the counterpoint for me. Like if that's if I need a a, a thing to listen to because I'm deep in my feelings and I just kind of need to get through it. I'm listening to hotels. If I'm feeling like I just want to feel positive, I'm listening to Jubilee. They're like the, they're like the two sides of the coin of my 2021 life. Uh, so, you know, if there are albums that you were looking to listen to and hadn't listened to yet, if you somehow missed those two, mm -hmm. they're two of the best of the last year. And that Doja Cat album is great. I, again, I'm really happy that you won. I, I think we've mentioned every performer except uh, J Balvin. J Balvin came on early and he got kind of overshadowed. Didn't really love the first half of that performance. I, and then uh, the second half of his, I, I thought I liked the thing he did with the crowd of people he had dancing with him. And I thought that was cool. Uh, but otherwise, I didn't really have a whole lot of strong feelings about that, much like many of the performances of the night because it's yeah. the Grammys and there are many boring performances. Yeah, they closed on Brothers Osborne. And that was totally boring. I it was, it. it was fine. It was fine. It was fine. There yeah. I my my favorite win of the night was Baby Keem. I I like that song a lot. With he did with Kendrick. Kendrick, I guess, was uh, had better things he could do than go to the Grammys. Hopefully it's putting out another album. Hopefully that's why he wasn't there. But uh, I was uh glad to see Baby Keem win. I'm looking forward to more work from him. Well, that was the Grammys. The award show you will remember from the past eight days. For the rest of your life, everyone's going to be talking about the 2022 Grammys and all that happened in it. Gosh, I'm glad that for the most part, award season is over. Oh, man. Having the Oscars and the Grammys back to back like this because they had to shove it back because of COVID. Like this was oh, this was an exhausting week to be a pop culture writer slash watcher. Ugh, glad that's over until next year, everyone. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and on that do note <laughs> uh yeah there you go thanks for listening to this podcast um this one will go up on on your youtube channel as it so often does yes, it uh, will. so if, if you didn't know taught us a podcast with me wow where we compare two songs usually uh similar types of songs similar type of artists 
similar time periods. Uh, you know, do we really argue which one is better? Sure. Mostly it's just an excuse to talk about music and the details of it because that's fun. If you want to uh, argue about who should have won Grammys more, you can check out, uh, for example, we did an episode about Olivia Rodrigo's Good For You versus Billie Eilish's Happier Than Ever. If that's the kind of thing that interests you where we argue over which one was better, that's uh, this is the podcast for you. Check it out. Wow. Thanks, Todd. You're welcome. Great advice. Well. All right. Now we're gone. See everyone. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.